on that app. That's cool. Which Jigoku Raku's full full run is on there. Well, for our listeners. But we're not. It's not. It's not manga day, Micah. No, oh. it's anime day. Oh, I'm Kevin. Yeah, yeah, I'm Micah. Today we're gonna talk about Promare. Pro. Go go go. Yeah, that's the. No, I know. I was trying to make it sound as lame as possible. Go go go. It's like a question. Go 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 go. Go 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 go. Go 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 go. What what was that? Why did you give noises to it? Because I don't know what this is. So you're gonna. You don't remember? This is the one from the thing when we did the PV, the preview episode. This one was like one of the ones that was like, oh my god, that looks awesome. I don't know what it is. The colors. Yeah. The one with the colors. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I remember. I remember there being lots of awesome colors, and that's all. Do you know- Are there robots? Yeah. I think, I think there so. was like mobile suit thing, and I don't remember anything. I just remember it being looking really Well, you're in for a treat today, because this is a, a anime mm. produced or from the studio Trigger. Do you remember oh, Studio Trigger? No. Darling in the Franks. Oh. Kill okay. a Kill. Okay. Uh, Gurren Log and some other stuff. So it's a very new studio, so mm. not a lot of uh, 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 backlog. Okay. But I want to tell you a story about Studio Trigger. Okay, I'm ready. I okay. like stories. So a guy by the name of Imaishi Hiroyuki. <laughs> Hiroyuki. Yeah. Yeah, Imaishi. Oh. Hiroyuki, yeah. Uh, what, loves that? anime. He loved anime. A little boy. Just like A me. little baby boy. He started out as a little baby boy. Just like me. And he loved the animus and the mangos. Mm. The hentai. And he's good at draw- drawing. Drew, yeah. So he drew some pictures. Okay. He went to animation school. What? Graduated animation school. Normal. Start a job at... Trigger. Gynax. Gynax. Okay. Do you know Gynax? No. <laughs> <laughs> so Gynax was a big animation studio in like the 90s. Uh-huh. He's responsible for like Evangelion. Oh. All, all the like big edgy ones. Sweet. And... Mr. Mr. Uh, uh, Imaishi Hiroyuki san mm-hmm. uh, was a key animator on Evangelion. Ooh. Uh, and he worked at uh, 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 Gynax for a while, kind of made a name for himself, but then he left. What? And he made his own studio, Studio Trigger. It's like Osama Tezuka story. Kinda. Kinda. Uh, and this guy. He made his own studio. And that's what Trigger is? <clears throat> Trigger is his studio. It's his own studio. Okay. And so, uh, and he also, he has his partner uh, called uh, Nakashima Kazuki. And uh, they seems like they work together a lot mm-hmm. to make huge, uh, f- people love it in America, animes. Cool. Okay. So I've got, I've got a list of some here. Give it to me. Drop them. And so mainly, so Nakashima Kazuki, his friend, mm-hmm. is mainly, he's like a big idea guy. Yeah. So he's like script and original story okay. writer. Mm-hmm. Uh, so right now I'm just talking about Imaishi Hiroyuki's animator. He's an animator. Right, he right. does the, the heavy lifting stuff. Um, okay. So we talked about it a little bit already. Key animation for Evangelion. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was the director and key animator for Gurren Lagann. Okay. Okay. Stop me if you hear one you know or recognize. I have heard of Gurren Gur- Lagann. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> It's seen it. uh, Go on. Darling in the Franks, oh. director and storyboard. Hey. Uh, Fully loved. Fully Cooley storyboard. Oh, my dick got a little bit warm mm-hmm. when you said that. Uh, the original you know, one? Mm-hmm. Ooh. Do you know Little Witch Academia? Yeah, no. Okay. That's really, people love it. It's like Harry Potter, but with anime girls. Hey. Uh, Redline, key animator. Ooh. I'm at half mast. Panty stocking. Do you know that one? No. It's about these like magical girl angels, but they're like really dirty. They're like really <laughs> sexual. <laughs> they're, like, they're like really fucking dirty. And and they're drawn. They're drawn like kind of. It kind of looks like Invader Zim, the way they're drawn. Oh. They're like or Powerpuff Girls. Oh. It's like super like chibi, but they're yeah. like. I don't know. Like, but they're like that grown. Hit concept in the lore. They're like grown up, and they like sure. The panty her. They like take their underwear off and it becomes mm. weapons. It's cool. And uh, okay. <clears throat> so he's key animator and director of that one. Kill a Kill. Do you know Kill a Kill? Yeah, actually, Gray was telling me about that the other story, day. Story. Trying to sell me on it. Uh, original story and director of Kill a Kill. Mm. Uh, and uh, also uh, character design for Ninja Slayer. I wanted to put that in there. Oh. Uh, and a whole bunch of other stuff that 
I didn't feel like writing in my notes, but he worked on. He's been very busy. Yeah, he's, he's like very prolific. He, lot I think, of lot of heavy hitters. I think I think you're right on the money when you said he's like Tes- Osamu Tezuka. He's kind of like a modern day. Osama Tezuka, where he just does a shit ton of stuff. Yeah, he's all not of it's the awesome. guy. He's not the guy that just has his head down, works for a company, and like yeah, just he, loves to animate. He has a vision. Yeah, he has a vision, and not only that is he has a, like a unique style that yeah. he brings to everything. Like, uh, you know, we you were talking about the one with the colors. So he's, he's <laughs> yeah. got bright colors is sure. a big thing in all of his Unique animations. Unique style, I'm always a fan of. Bright colors, something novel like is good. over the top characters, like characters that are like, I'm gonna punch through the heavens and you're gonna, you know, they're just talking way over the top mm. and their personalities are like really ridiculous. And then exaggerated movements to emphasize the action, like, yeah. you know, that thing like, I think it got famous in Naruto where like, they like pull back their fist, but the camera gets close on their head, and it mm-hmm. looks like their fist is like heck of far away. Right, right. It's all he tiny d- tons of that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah, and just like blow it way out of proportion. Hell yeah! Because in anime, Shin, anime, in anime, mm-hmm. you're not limited to the laws of reality. You know, uh, so you, in, in like an Avengers movie, they use CG for that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But like in anime, because it's all animated, even the people are animated, like. It doesn't seem out of place when suddenly something goes crazy, at least right. in his. So everything's crazy. So you don't you don't feel taken out when like one dude fights like a hundred monsters. So this is a movie, Promea. Yeah. And when did it get released? It came out last week. Ooh, uh, fresh off when, the press. When we were reviewing uh, uh, that really shitty anime. Good Magmel. Yeah. Gunjo no Magma. No Magma. So I don't know. If you feel like Anime Day just loves anime, watch listen to our Gunjo no Magma episode and listen to we a shit on anime. Shit too. On, we heck shit anime. on anime sometimes. Yeah. If they deserve it. If they yeah. deserve yeah. shit yeah. from our butts. And I have to say, when I started this podcast, I thought we were gonna shit on anime a lot more than we actually do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, a lot of that has to do with just uh, both of us trying to be open uh-huh. to to because we didn't really know what a lot about uh, what's hot and what's coming out mm-hmm. all the newer anime stuff and we were very nostalgic with uh, yeah, yeah, what yeah. we love and the old classic stuff so I think uh, we were trying to uh, you know we we're trying to enjoy stuff we we're trying to like it we're not trying to be super cynical and stuff but but you know sometimes you just can't help it. We, yeah. When it's obvious. Yeah. We, we try to be critical, I think. Today we're going to watch Prudo Maya. Hell yeah. Also, uh, on our reaction on uh-huh. the YouTube channel, a reaction of Carol and Tuesday, somebody wanted us to do episode two. Okay. Uh, a reaction video to that. So That maybe sounds like a bonus app. Yeah, it could be a bonus app. Uh, and for those of you watching and listening, we have uh, I have a YouTube channel where I post up our reactions to some of the animes that we watch, so you can check that out. There'll be a link in the description of this episode. But today we have to go to the movie theater, right? So, so that's super illegal. No, yeah, no <laughs> cameras allowed. So uh, maybe not for this one, but the one after, if it's mm-hmm. not a movie, I don't know what we're planning on watching after this. I'm sure we'll talk about that later. Also, uh, I got a thing to do later today. Uh-huh. So the uh, our. Uh, the post watch portion of this mm-hmm. today's episode is going to be a day later. Uh huh. Yeah. So I yeah. just wanted to let everybody know about that. If there seems to be a little bit of discontinuity or whatever, yeah. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, for the podcast listeners, I'll probably just edit all of this out. But uh, you're gonna hear it right after we get done talking. Yeah. So maybe you won't even know. So, but before we get done talking, is there anything else you want to know about Promare? Mm, yeah what's it about what oh. is the thing <laughs> did i forget to mention what it's about yeah <laughs> you were all fucking sucking the dick of the guy yeah whatever his name is what's his name hiroyuki hiroyuki was like, oh, hiroyuki and okay he's Man, a big show. he's a he plays a big role in uh his shows but i just want to state like anime you know like film or music it takes a whole team mm-hmm. uh and so I, I don't want it to seem like he is like the only person of here, course. but of course he's the kind of like the mastermind, like leader, you said, the team yeah, leader. He's got a he's, he's the got quarterback. A, a cool story. 
Yeah. And I think his friend... Uh, uh, and he's got a lot of cred. Yeah, yeah. Nakashima Kazuki, I think, also does a lot of the um, creative, like, idea mm -hmm. stuff, which, uh, you know, sometimes I feel like, I got, like, I know how to do, like, cool stuff, like, with movies and stuff, but I don't have any good ideas, you know? You ever sure. feel like that sometimes? Yeah. It's like, I know how to play music, but I don't have an idea for a song, right. you know? So uh, it takes both. It takes a lot of people to make a good anime. Uh, so anyways, it's about... Mm. It's about... Mm. The future. Cool. In the future, there's stuff very high tech. But you know what still happens? Fire still happens. Fire. And there's mutants. And they're firefighters? Yeah, mutants that make fires and they fight the fires. And this is just a firefighter show? Yeah, they're firefighters, but they fight, they fight uh, pyrokinetic mutants. <laughs> okay. Also. Naturally. That's it. Because it's the future. That's it. And pyrokinetic demons are... Yeah. So what I'm trying, I've been trying this thing out lately where like, I feel like anime has a bad rep for being like way hard to explain. Like we talked about it before long ago, like, but so I'm trying to like s super simplify, simplify all the synopsis. That's, that's a good practice. You don't want to add too many details because once you add a lot of details to the anime, it it gets exposed to how ridiculous the yeah, story actually it, gets. Yeah. You know? But you know, it's just a story about people mm -hmm. fighting fires. It's like Rescue Me, you know, yeah. that, that show with that one yeah, guy. that show was shit. Yeah. Uh, so is that, okay, so that's it. That's Promare. That's where we're going to go watch it. And we're going to go to E.K. Bukuro, the yeah. Humax Theater. We're going on a field trip. We got another field trip episode. Did you got your handy dandy notebook? Yeah, I got my I got my fanny pack. You got your water bottle? I got my water, I got my Picari sweat, bottle. I'm going to drink and, mm. and sneak into the theater. Well, we don't, well, yeah. And they'll never know. Mm. Uh, fuck so yeah, we're g <laughs> the Humax Theater. So I've never been to the Humax Theater. Yeah, I think uh, maybe I have. Uh, is it in? Anyway, yeah. It's so yeah, we're gonna go check it out. Let's do it. And the next time you hear our voices, we will have watched Promare at the Humax Theater, Ikebukuro. See you then. <laughs>俺の火消し魂に火がつくぜ。燃やさなければ生きていけない。それがバーニッシュだ。30年前突然出現したバーニッシュ。炎を操るミュータントたちが起こした大火災に世界は大打撃を受けた。しかし、今バーニッシュの
I feel like you know after we watched it we watched it together and we've been like in this kind of like limbo state where we like don't want to say sure we can't talk about to it. each other at so all. it's like we can't like it's it's like who who goes first because like what if what if you like say something and then the other person's like completely well, anti you had mentioned to me that this movie had a lim- uh, limited showing it was only being shown at uh, a few theaters only two theaters only in all two of tokyo theaters in all of tokyo so uh yeah it was a special thing i guess and uh trigger uh-huh. the studio is uh known for kill a kill and the other one Gurren Lagann? Gurren Lagann, yeah. Those are the big ones. Big ones. Uh, the, so the director's very famous, and um, we got there. We went to the basement to the theater. There was an, a cool a couple cool statues of the yeah. main characters. Uh, so if you follow me on Twitter, you can see I put a, post up a video yeah, I posted, of us checking that out. I, I posted one today yeah. about it, too. Uh, so, it was pretty uh, cool. I mean, you, I didn't know, and they're new. It's a new story, new character, not coming uh-huh. from anything. So it's interesting, like... Because it wasn't just me, because you're used to, I'm used to at least, mm-hmm. being in Japan and seeing stuff like that and being like, oh, this is a character that many you know. people probably know and love, but I don't know who it is, uh, which is the same feeling of this, but I knew that everybody else there too, these are, they're being introduced yeah. to these characters, these physical characters Brand here before even seeing the movie. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. thought was kind of interesting. Yeah. Uh, and uh, since you kind of mentioned in the beginning of this episode that you weren't really familiar with uh, uh, Imaishi. Uh, or Studio Trigger too much. Hmm. Uh, what kind of was your impressions of your first your first dose? Oh, it was great. Of you really liked it? I really, really, I, you know, just to cut straight to the end, I really, really enjoyed this, uh, the movie. Uh, beautiful, visually, the colors, mwah, uh, and a tasteful use of CGI as yeah. well. Very tasteful, I, I, appropriate. I wouldn't be surprised if someone told me that it was all CG. But you don't know. No. Like, it doesn't look ever like CG. I don't think it is, but there is a lot. Mm-hmm. I think there is a lot of CG in this. Um, but it, it looks great. Yeah. It was just... Because the style is just so unique and yeah. not something that you generally see. But it is distinctively anime, yeah. Yeah, Japanese yeah, yeah. animation. I so. think a problem with a lot of CG in anime is they use, like, the computer to make it look anime. But in this one, they use the computer to make it look awesome. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, it looked great, uh, and uh, loved the soundtrack. Mm. Oh, you did the the music in the beginning. I don't know if you noticed, but I was dancing. Oh, I didn't notice that. I was dancing while while it was showing us the sort of uh, the prologue mm-hmm. to to the situation, the thirty years before yeah, yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and like, I was like, because it's got this like kind of dark sort of it's uh, like tech techno- electronic electronic there's there's like some EDM. bits it was kind of like an edm thing mm-hmm. but it was kind of dark there were some bits that was sound a little bit like 8-bit almost like an eight there was like yeah a but it was scratchy subtle. Yeah, tune. It, yeah. mm-hmm. but it was it was really cool and there was just a lot of music yeah going. it almost seemed like there was music going on the whole time and also like fastly changing uh-huh like they were just like like immediately after the opening scene it went to it and then it was like when it was introducing the, the fire squad uh-huh. uh the, was it the rescue something oh yeah rescue team mm-hmm. um our main team. switch to another like mm-hmm. more poppy sort of song and it was just going like track and by track there's like this kind of uh balance that there is of like this like really like uh, industrial not industrial but like electronic you know uh synthetic Music with like poppy, like symphonic pop music. It kind of reminded me to think of it now of like Jet Set Radio, not just the music, but like the artistic direction mm-hmm. of everything. Like, uh, like, be, like the CGI stuff, there's a lot of like polygonal things with the fire and, and the different things like that. Uh, and the ice, mm-hmm. a lot of like uh, stuff that reminded me of that, but just super modernized. Yeah, and it looked great. Yeah, it yeah, was, it was, it was cool. And, uh, cool. A lot of characters. Uh-huh. Yeah, a lot of characters. And I love the sort of classic way that they introduce the character. Mm-hmm. Each character got their own like. As it was introducing them, it would it would uh, do the like name and in, in uh-huh. crazy font yeah, big huge, in big the background font, yeah. English, and then the Japanese like sort of like almost spray paint. Yeah. Uh, across, uh, and there was a lot of them. So mm-hmm. like. Yeah, as it was going through playing music and they're and all... And what, what I loved about that introduction of the team is it was like every character got like did something really cool and it was like, boom, that's... And then you know the whole character. Like, you get it. They do like one cool thing and then you mm. get it. And then you have right. the whole team in like 30 seconds. Like, instantly you know everybody. 
a little it, bit longer than thirty seconds because well, there was a lot of there was a lot of characters, but it was they yeah. went boom, 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 boom. They were going through them a lot uh-huh. uh, and very quickly, um, and it was it was sweet. It was sweet. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, just since we're on it now, if I were to go through, okay, the characters we got our. If you're okay with that, uh, well, if there's anything uh, else you want to say? I, I, I just want to let, let's the topic. let's uh, let me say my my spoiler free review, and then we'll go into the full spoilers and talk about all that stuff. How's that sound? Okay. Uh, so basically my spoiler-free review, uh, I kind of had a, a lot of thoughts. Uh, but more or less, I was positive on this movie. But uh, I think if you're already a fan of Imaishi and Studio Trigger, you're going to love this movie. Yeah, you can't miss it. It does – It he does – it's doing him. He's doing like everything that he's famous for doing, you know, big, crazy, colorful, action-y uh, stuff. And he, his – the story isn't really what's important. It's more of this like like a music video, you know? Mm. It's just like a, a spectacle of like mm. lights and colors it's and an sounds. Experience. It's an experience, yeah. Yeah. And uh, one of the negative points I had is it seemed like all the characters were kind of one note and shallow. But mm. like I said before, that's not really what is important. I don't feel like that's what they're trying to have these like amazing characters. It, no. They're, they're trying to make just... You only have a couple hours to... There's no going to be no di- character development really with, well, that, you can, that you can really... Th- there's like into. two hour long movies with characters. Yeah, that's true, it. but it's an anime but I, and I th- you want to flex the, 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 the Yeah, that's not, that's not what his goal is, is having a right. character piece. It's this... Mm-hmm. Light and sound and fury. Welcome spectacle. to this world and this concept that I came up. Yeah, with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, there's like awesome uh, sets. It feels like there's like millions and millions of like settings. Like they have that like cool pizzeria, and all of them look mm-hmm. beautiful. Like mm-hmm. that frozen lake in the mountains. Lake, yeah. There's like a cave. There's like they're in the city. The city was beautiful. Mm-hmm. Like everywhere they go is amazing. And the yeah. And the from the beginning, and stuff. From the beginning. It's almost like nonstop action, and whenever the action like slows down for like a uh, audience respite, almost mm, like sure. you need like a break from the epic action. Mm. Those scenes were also beautiful, like the colors and the way everything was like uh, 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 composed was uh, it was just just gorgeous. Uh, on that note, I wanted to mention that uh, you often talk about how it takes too long sometimes for. Uh, a first episode of uh, an anime to get to the point to show us Mm -hmm. what we're here to see they did not hesitate at all with this and they like they knew it's like they knew exactly what the audience wants yeah and just was like here you go like immediately like amazing action and and and, like a crazy animation Mm -hmm. and not just like for example to contract to compare it to another field trip episode we did of um was it city hunter Uh where like there was an action sequence in the beginning but it was very short-lived and it was just sort of like hey here's those characters you remember this was and then there was a and then in city hunter real quick in city hunter after the action sequence there wasn't another action sequence for a really long time right in this one that first action sequence happens and then throughout the whole movie it's long and then throughout the whole movie the action just gets more and more intense it gets crazier and crazier and crazier until the end when yeah and uh if uh, I, w- I would to, I don't, because I don't know if this was just a matter of it being late at night and having already worked a full day mm-hmm. uh, and being kind of tired, but I was a little fatigued by it. That's, by the end. that's what I also thought too. I thought maybe because it was like we were getting out of there at 11 and we had both worked a whole day. Like uh, that first sequence, I was like, oh, this is going to yeah. be great. I was just it, it was like a roller coaster mm-hmm. but the end of course you got to build it up uh, yeah. once you get to the end sort of like action sequence you just kept like building and building and building and it, getting it, more and more and more and like, more like they kept having I like become, final boss to fights numb to it yeah, yeah. but I was you know to to be honest I was physically yeah. uh tired yeah. because it was like past my bedtime yeah it, <laughs> like I I kind of thought of it as like it's it's like uh you know that meme this is a little vulgar but you know that meme like uh I nutted but she's still sucking that's um, kind of what I felt like watching it, like towards the end, like, oh my god, it's amazing, and it won't and end. You already climaxed, and yeah, you're still being, it just keeps getting more and more being stimulated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but again, I'm not sure. I can't. I don't want to. I want to say that it's a little unfair because mm-hmm. I was actually tired and waiting for mm-hmm. it to be done so I could go yeah, home yeah, and go yeah. to sleep. But um, 
uh, yeah, if I were to just take it, like, watch the first action sequence, and then the next day watch the last action mm-hmm. sequence, it would be fucking... That's awesome. Uh, and then, I guess, the, the last kind of thing I wanted to hit on was, it seemed like at the beginning that they were trying to have, like, some sort of uh, commentary on, like, society, you know? Uh, I don't, I don't want to get into too many spoilers about, like, the thing is, but it that does seem like there's like, um, you know, things about like the internet and people being in crowded trains and like the rage, and then there's, okay. you know, uh, yeah, there's some uh, things that we'll get into more in spoilers. It seemed like they were trying to get into like some kind of deeper meaning, but it never really went it didn't the pay full off. where the it full, uh, yeah. full on they, that they hinted way. Hinted at it at the beginning, but in the end, it, I don't, I didn't see it really connecting to anything. Yeah, that which, which I don't, I don't fault it for. I don't, yeah, I don't think, fine. I don't think the creators are trying to make a big statement. Just me as a, as a person, uh, this promare uh, is so much like, especially story wise, and uh, I mean the animation is beautiful, but like story wise and character wise, it's a lot like it's very similar to the other shows that Trigger has done. Really? So, uh, because they didn't do anything a little deeper or more sophisticated, mm-hmm. uh, I was a little disappointed. But that that's like a minor blip uh, on my yeah. uh, uh, view of the, the show. Yeah, I wasn't expecting it to take it into any sort of like social commentary mm-hmm. place. But um, there might have been potential there, uh, as it kind of like hinted at in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm not, I wasn't disappointed in any way that it didn't. Cool. You know, really pay off in that way. So, uh, does this make you want to go watch some of the other? Yeah, things absolutely, from Studio absolutely. Yeah. Oh, also, uh, I noticed before we get into the spoiler thing, if anybody's interested to see this movie uh, and not get spoiled, um, the uh, one of the characters, uh, voice actresses, is uh, Haruko from Fully Cooly. Oh, cool. The Japanese. Uh, do you know which one? Is it the old one? Nope. The new one? What? Wait. Oh, the... They're both the same person. Oh, you the hard... Uh, was it uh, the mad scientist? No. What? Haruko's the girl. The, the school girl? Or the girl... Haru, Haruko, Haru, Hara, Hara, yes, blah, blah, blah? Yes, yes, yes. Well, yeah, she the was in actress. in Promare. Was she the mad scientist girl? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. With the, the, with the techie the, girl? With yeah, the yeah. things? Yeah, yeah, that was her. Yeah, cool. That's awesome. Cool. What was her name? Like Alyssa or something? something Ni- Michi- like Michina? But yeah. Like I said, the, there's a lot of people, and they kind of go by pretty quick. It's hard to catch all the names. Uh, but uh, yeah, Lucia, 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 Fix. Lucia Fix. Lucia Fix. She was uh, funny. Did, did you have a favorite? She had a little mouse friend. Did you have a favorite character? Who's Ooh. your Who's your guy? I mean, besides the main character, Godel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would say uh, I liked very no. I liked uh, Ignis. S. Yes, that's that's the fire chief. Yeah, he's got the sunglasses and the mustache. Uh, and he's, he cool he's like he's like a police chief in an '80s cop movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. He was great. Uh, so yeah, the I mean the characters are great, but like I said, those characters have been in other Trigger shows, like almost uh, identical. There's really? no means of. But anyways, mm. that's enough about pre-spoiler stuff let's just get into super spoiler time okay because i want to get into it been warned if you've been you warned don't want to be spoiled and you want to watch the thing and watch it and then come back yeah and then listen or but but talk. also i feel like you Deets. don't you don't need to really care about spoilers if you've it's not like that, it's not i've that said kind it of show. i've said it before if you've seen gurren log and if you've seen kill a kill if you've seen anything else by trigger I think you kind of get where the story's gonna go. Yeah, it's just uh, it's just a, a, a spectacle for your eye holes. Yeah, like, you know. Yeah. Uh, but just in case it's you're worried, uh, I'm gonna put just a little sound blip right here. <laughs> and now we're into full spoiler territory. All right, you've been warned. Let's do it. Okay, can I name all the characters? Sure, let's can I do name it. Name the characters, and I want you to try to describe them. Okay. Uh, and what archetype they are? You said that Trigger has all these characters, so mm-hmm. maybe you can compare them to other people. I don't know. So we have the, our main protagonist, Garo uh, Temos. Okay, so he's blue hair guy. If you've seen Gurren Lagann, he's Kamina. You know, he's got muscles. He never has a shirt on. Big spiky blue hair. He's all like, yeah, I'm on the fuck. He, he does like Yankee Bosuzoku stances. Mm-hmm. He's, he's like. He's dumb too. Yeah, everyone calls him stupid. 
uh, if you know, he's he's that, led by his heart. His heart, yeah. And his, and his heart comes first, and then his mind he, comes he, later. He's a he, reckless yeah. meathead. He, the first time we see him, they like shoot him straight into the air in this like <laughs> cannon, and then he lands on his head. And then they're like, oh, he's, he's dead. dead. He's totally he died. Dead. And he's like, I'm alive! I'm alive, motherfucker! <laughs> he did it! Yeah. yeah um, and, then he, and then he does this whole transformation sequence where his like robot is supposed to look like this old-timey like, firefighter uh, guy. Yeah, he got this whole uh, kabuki kabuki thing, like the way he talks and like he's very showy yeah. and flashy. And he wants to kick ass but he wants to do it in style you know so he's like I am adorable yeah and he does like a, he does like a kabuki voice yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's pretty sweet and then i would like to know at least i felt this way his hairstyle besides the blue is kind of like my hair i thought that too oh, <laughs> thought that and too. i was like i love this man. yeah he's got I like a buzzed on the sides and like a curly yeah flip on the top of course, of course it'd be much better to be super exaggerated my yeah, hair yeah. doesn't spike like that but uh, yeah, he was sweet, he was dumb, and he was uh, uh, simple and just, uh, yeah. He's you like, know yeah. how he would react in any given situation. If you Straight get a hypothetical shooter. situation, yeah. you know exactly what he Straight shooter. Would. Something's on fire, you punch it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, then we got, um, let me skip that guy. Let's go, uh, with the, the burning yeah, rescue team Let's start with their burning first. rescue team, yeah. Aina Ardebit. Yeah, so she's our, our female girl. She's got, like, uh, pink hair. She wears like a, a tank top, cut off the tummy part, mm-hmm. and suspenders, suspenders and short shorts. And she's got uh, thigh high socks, but one's taller than the other. Or it's like leggings, but there's like a bit cut out. I don't want to sound like a pervy perv or anything, but nice proportions. Uh-huh. And I really enjoy the first way time we see her is her butt first. <laughs> her, her, because uh, she flies the jet. Mm-hmm. How how it's designed, a darling for her to in the Frank cockpit. Yeah. It's like she's, a, she's like she's like on a like a uh, crotch rocket motorcycle yeah, inside a jet, but like the front is lower, so her butt has to come up uh-huh. more, and it's just it's it's kind of inviting. Yeah, and, uh, so it's it, nice. And if she's she, an animated girl, so it, yeah. it's impossible. It, but it, uh-huh. I don't know. Maybe it, if she knows, if me, you know, or, if you know Gurren Logan, she's got like a Yoko vibe. The, the girl with the mm, gun is that her name? Yoko? I, I, I forget her name. Then we got Remy Puguna. Who was it? He didn't do much. Yeah, he didn't really do He's much. He's a glasses guy. He's a glasses guy. He's a glasses guy. He's fine. What did yeah. he do? Like, what was his he, job? He in the had. Team? He had. Uh, he, at the beginning, he uh, helps hold up the ceiling. Uh, he fights hmm. that first fire. That was cool. So he's yeah. just got like a regular sort of mech suit. suit. I, I kind of got the feeling that if there's like an anime series, he's the guy that's always like telling uh, uh, Garo is like. No, you're dumb. Do it yeah. the right way. Yeah. You know, he's but like he didn't the, really contribute by too the much. book guy. Yeah, uh, he was just there to fill that character mm-hmm. glasses guy type. Yeah, the glasses guy. <laughs> and we got Varys Truss, big black dude, big black dude, baseball uh, cap backwards. Yeah, he was pretty cool. I like uh, his style. Yeah, um, and the pizza eating competition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, not like actually a competition but like that sort of like interaction yeah. they had him and Garo big big shoulders yeah he's, he's got cool. arms like a leg lucia fex now this is the the this is voice mad scientist girl is mayumi Shin, uh, shintani uh-huh who is the japanese voice actress for the fully coolie character haruko haruhara or whatever um but it sounded like her like i recognized the voice and i checked it just to make sure i was right uh which <laughs> I was whoa and uh but it's like more exaggerated mm-hmm. like all the when when haruko's being silly and is like nyang, nyang, or whatever uh-huh. it's like she's like that voice yeah. all the time yeah and, and she's like the joystick girl she had yeah. like a gamer girl she's got like a fighting she, stick yeah like she that. had she had literally she, like her controls for the drones yeah. like she controlled the drones and uh-huh. stuff um and it was literally yeah. like an arcade she's got, style joystick. i'm just gonna buttons. describe her appearance lab coat she's across her hands yeah. that one time. she's got a lab coat uh plaid skirt goggles and then striped uh uh, uh leggings tights so she's the smallest she's game one. she's the petite fetish yeah. one gamer gamer girl she's you know nerd bait yeah, but she. I think she, I feel like she was a little better than our. Uh, uh, what was that other show we watched with the nerd bait? But they didn't try to make her yeah. sexy or anything. Which you know, was and cool. she, she was all like, I'm, "Yeah, she had that you know mad scientist voice and yeah, yeah." And uh, she had a little pet mouse. She got mad when Garo got into another robot that she didn't make. Yeah, 
and then and, and then she's I, she's the she's the mechanic she mm-hmm. she maintains the uh, equipment and, and then the the team captain who we already talked about a little bit blonde Gunishu X. blonde buzz cut yeah he looks like he's from top gun like yeah. he'd be in a top gun movie he's, he's got jeans sunglasses and mustache yeah, dude. And, and he and he always is like hands on the the guardrail and he's like ah that garo guy he's at it again yeah yeah he's pretty cool uh, so that's he didn't our really main have team. a whole lot of lines, but mm-hmm. like what he did, the interactions that he did have with the Freeze Force, and they they like build out the world. I feel like they're yeah, you know yeah. they it make, made they it feel you, like they're, they're, they're a place. real team. And yeah, like it's a, this is an actual place, and they existed before you showed up at the theater to watch yeah. them. So uh, those are the main. Those are mm, the main our rescue, guys. the burning rescue team, mm-hmm. whose uh, job it is. Well, let's talk about the plot a little bit. So okay. long ago, people suddenly became uh, uh burnish or like mutants they could like, yeah. shoot fire yeah so when they so got angry it, so yeah when they got or angry passionate. and frustrated so the examples that we were given is in, in tokyo we went to different places around mm-hmm. the world in tokyo japan there was a guy in a, a typical scene crowded a guy subway. in a crowded uh train. train during rush hour being cramped by a girl yeah. in front of him and just everybody around him and he and he just berserker rage and then the, the whole, whole train explodes. train Light, there's an, there's another one uh, San Francisco uh, rush hour guy stuck in traffic the guy behind him keeps honking his horn he can't do anything he ro- he rages out and the whole highway explodes there's another one of a dude on Twitter ah uh, yeah dude tweeting on the internet mm-hmm. internet rage uh, or gamer rage maybe who knows yeah there was a a, a, a French uh, pregnant girl who like got was getting beat by her husband yeah, or something that was, dark. That, was yeah, kind of dark. that was the that, darkest that's one that that's what made me think they were gonna go to some right this is supposed to say something about society or whatever but um so yeah then that and that was 30 years prior to current Mm -hmm. events so that was i guess the the moment in which uh, this mutation in humanity happened where some people become what is called burnish and um they have the ability to basically control fire and they're immune to fire as well they're like x-men but they're all the same yeah and then we have like a montage of like they're all the human people burnish they want rights they want you know to change the world, and other people are afraid of the burnish, and they're like, no burnish. And then, cut to now, where burnish, no burnish. are seen as terrorists. Mm-hmm. They occasionally uh, w- attack mm-hmm. uh, and and burn up various uh, buildings and, and places. Så there's been developed a high tech uh, super high tech fighters. super firefighters to fight the burnish. Yep. And uh, so we go from the prologue of this is how the burnish thing started. To there isn't a burnish outbreak. There's an attack. Yeah. There's an attack, and we have to go There's save a high tech office. And like you said, the cannon thing that launches Garo, yeah. it happens several times in the in the show, and it's it's both funny and like yeah. awesome. Yeah, it's like it, like a cannon that shoots Gundams. <laughs> yeah, that I wrote in my notes. Like, how awesome is that? Like, it's not just a Gundam; it's a cannon that shoots Gundams. And so uh, during the um, fire, during this this first long action sequence. Uh, you get it's really feels like a color battle. Yeah, you know you have the reds and Reddish, the yellows, pinkish, purples. Yeah, uh, of the firefighting squad uh-huh. with their uh, shooting the the blue. light uh, blue. Yeah, okay. Uh, their ice cannons mm-hmm. uh, versus the the purple. Yeah, purple and yeah, yeah, purple yeah. and like, greenish. Yeah, different yeah, color. Green, blue, sort fire. Of, yeah. It's just so colorful. Yeah, and one one thing I kind of notice that i don't know if there's much behind this but like normally the fiery instinct guy mm. his like power is red you know? right but in this one his he shoots ice stuff right but and he the, is red though yeah that's true that's also true like, yeah, yeah the equipment and everything is red it's just when they shoot the thing it's a it's light like blue because blue. yeah it's supposed to be water versus fire basically yeah, yeah, yeah. so they're shooting yeah. ice. so they got they got all these cannons that like uh Ice everything, and so these burnish characters. So they they end up fighting three of these burnish characters, mm-hmm. and uh, the burnish. And it's not only that they control fire, but they're able to like. I didn't. I didn't get m- that it was all of them could do that, but certain ones are maybe, able to yeah, like manifest yeah, right, yeah. like Some motorcycles and armor. Yeah, they out can of like fire. manifest armor and different things, um, which they had on. And then um, awesome battle, awesome and battle. Garo fights what is the, the leader, leader. Mm-hmm. Uh, who we find out who's uh, has a name because he becomes yeah, a, a he main becomes character. The main, yeah, uh, Leo Fotia. Yeah, 
uh, who's like kind of this younger boy, which when we saw those statues out there, I thought it was a girl. Uh huh. Uh, one of those. Yeah, yeah, I thought so too. So, uh, and then I was but like, oh, he's, it's a He's dude. skinny. He's, I think he's supposed to be a, a, a skinny a young, young teen. Teenager, yeah. Because yeah. he said, like, gaki something. Yeah, he was like, what his, are you, his mask why are you broke. so young, you know? Yeah. And they arrest him. Mm-hmm. They catch the main guy at and the beginning. In comes the Freeze Force. So the Freeze yeah. Force is like the police squad. Super police. Yeah, the super police. SS. Who come uh, after the rescue, Mm -hmm. the burning rescue team. Big black armor. And they arrest. Scouters. They make the arrests of the people who who have been. uh, So so our our main team, they fight the fires and Freeze Force arrests the the They're dicks. It's kind of like the whole like FBI cop thing. Yeah, it's like yeah, the, the street police the versus street the force FBI. Comes like, all right, move aside. It's our turn now. You can just yeah. nothing to good, here. good work here. Good we'll work. take it. We'll from take here. it over. Yeah, go get a donut. And yeah. I really liked. I'm going to do a little jump here. A little like the reveal. I really like the reveal at the end. The main dick freeze force guy. <laughs> he's like, like a the tiny end, dude. He's just this because he's in this giant mech suit. You think That's he's got like body. spike teeth? Uh-huh. He's got like shark teeth, basically. And uh, you think he's like this giant dude, but he's really this tiny little guy. Yeah, and it's all armor. Yeah, it's, which is fun. Yeah, that was that was a fun. That was great. Uh, a little fun wink. Uh, thing. So the freeze force take the guy away, and uh, uh, we're kind of. I mean, all the promotional stuff shows this guy Leon as like a main guy, yeah. and he gets they get they take him away. They arrest him immediately, which yeah, I was kind of yeah. like, whoa. Yeah, they got. Uh, what's what's gonna happen? But that was all part of Leon's plan. See. Yeah, so uh, we start to once we they get into the custody of the freeze force, we start to uh, or the director starts to try to make us sympathize mm-hmm. for the burnish, uh, yeah. not telling, not really telling us whether or not they're good or bad, but just the way just that showing they're us how they're them. treated yeah. Yeah. in the jail, uh, very inhumanely, mm-hmm. uh, and then you see some wounded, some sick. Yeah. These burnish people all stayed in the same cell. Uh, some elderly and some kids mm-hmm. and you're like okay there's there's more to this story now and we're I, gonna start to see that it looks really cold too they're like in some arctic yeah base. To, to be able to control the fiery mm-hmm. outbursts or whatever they have these um cuffs that cover their hands so that they're it's like super cold so they're unable to uh ignite Do or their whatever. fire stuff uh but uh i think it seemed like it was part of leon's plan to get arrested so he could break out Hmm. a bunch of people which is ended up what ended up happening. yeah which yeah. happened in this cool awesome action scene uh which uh you know there's like a giant like humvee driving through this oh, like tight cool. tunnel yeah. that was cool uh but yeah cool action scene they end up escaping and uh and then from there it becomes this kind of story of garo and leon kind of realizing Leo. that they are kind of on the same team like garo and leon leo or leo sorry leo is uh you know he's like burnish or people we just have fire but we want to live we don't want to hurt people yeah so like um apparently gato has been watching fake news yeah and uh had no idea about the motives of the burnish or like even consider them as being uh possibly like just like regular humans mm-hmm. and uh, didn't really think about maybe they've been oppressed mm-hmm. which seems to be the case and uh yeah so he starts to be like starts to question yeah his life choices yeah and he goes to uh his mentor uh-huh who was the guy who rescued Captain him America, when he was a dude. child mm-hmm. and inspired him to become part of the burning rescue squad goes to his mentor and is like hey is this stuff true like are you are uh burnished people just like you and me like yeah, what's going on? Where are you? We are. We, and then he's like, oh, "I gotta show you something." And they show him the spaceship. Yeah, there's a spaceship he's underground. Got a spaceship. He's planning with a to warp take engine. ten thousand humans, yeah. selected humans, to go into space and to start the human race in the stars. Mm-hmm. Uh, with a warp engine. With a warp engine that is powered by burnish people. What? Strap them to this wheel. Spin them around. And uh, the burnish energy fire, mm. we learn later that it's like special alien fire, but whatever it sucks matter. it out of them and yeah. uses it to power the thing, and then it kills them. Yeah, and how? what happens when they die? They turn to ash. Turn to ash. Yeah, dude. So, yeah, that's super effed up. Yeah. And, and it and, reminded me of, have you seen all of Rick and Morty? 
Yeah. Okay. So I think it's season two where it's like Evil Morty. Mm -hmm. Evil Morty episode where it has like all the Mortys strapped up to their Uh base being like stabbed. Like, because like they need their fear fear and stuff. It's totally like that. It's exactly that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they're like, they're strapped up like um, on uh, on an X. Uh So their arms and legs are crossed out like that which is exactly how the Mortys work. and it's just like a big wall of them like yeah you see and they're all, all like screaming because yeah, yeah, it's yeah. painful or whatever yeah yeah yeah. and, and well, i was like oh rick and morty and so the the uh mentor guy says uh garo what do you think after i told you this and garo's like you can't do that they're people fucked up. What are you doing, and, and, then, and then guy's like i thought you'd say that betrayal yeah you guys send up to the prison in the yeah. dungeon and he's like, "Whoa, 